Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to take a look at weight and balance. I know this sounds like a really exciting topic, but it's one of those things that people ask me, well, how do you uh, do things more like you do in the real world? Well, you'd have to look at this page if that's something you want to do. So what's the deal with weight and balance? Well, let me go ahead and call up a useful little website called POH Performance to kind of take a look at it a different way. So your weight and balance is a combination of how heavy is the aircraft as well as just how the center of gravity is positioned on the aircraft. So for example, uh, we have ourselves a 172S here. Well, which you can see over in Flight Sim. And we also have a copy of that 172S I brought over into this website. This is a really cool website, by the way. So by default, aircraft can hold 53 gallons of fuel. Um, again, required fuel for this bigger flight. Don't worry about that. This gives us some estimates. But then we have some options to load your plane up. So I'm not the world's heaviest guy here. Like I said, I'm pretty good for just shy of six feet. So that's about that weight. So if I toss myself in the uh, driver's seat here, in the pilot's seat on the left-hand side, you can see that I've increased the weight of the airplane to about 2,100 pounds, which leaves me in the utility category. Uh, utility simply means you're allowed to do certain types of aerobatics. Uh, once you go up to the regular category, that's verboten. But uh, we've got a couple of the useful things here. We know if I just pop myself in the front seat there that all I've done is increase the weight of the plane a little bit. And my landing weight's pretty good. And you can say, like I said, pretty much moderate and take off pretty moderate like that so let's say we want to go ahead and toss somebody else in there let's I'll throw a copy of me up there in the right seat there hmm things have changed a bit Notice by just adding a single more copy of me, and this is not including my bag, of course, which we should probably put my bag in the back seat too, because the bag is, it's a pretty big bag now. <laughs> like I said, your flight bag will grow to expand the needs of your expanding flight bag. It's going to happen. So now we have to throw that in the back. You can see there's two of me up in the front, and look what it has done to the aircraft. Not only has it increased our takeoff weight significantly, we're now at 2,200 pounds, we can also see that we've um, took in our center of gravity and we've shifted it forward because there's so much extra weight up in the front seat. So let's say now I want to throw a copy of me in the back seat too. Get, get in the back, get in the back. Now you'll notice that the center of gravity of the aircraft has shifted back towards the middle, but you also notice that we're dangerously close to our maximum gross weight of our aircraft. You're sitting there going, who cares? Uh, it's maximum gross weight. What if we go a little bit over? What's actually bad going to happen here? Well, when you go to land when you're too heavy, guess what happens to the wheels? I think you can imagine that yourself. So let's go ahead and throw another copy of me. Boop. So now there are four copies of me inside this airplane right now. So take a look what's happened here. My takeoff weight is now too much. It's a 2550, uh, that's my maximum. And I'm now 2599. And my center of gravity, by the way, is wonderful right now. Not bad, not bad at all. So this means my aircraft is not safe to fly. If I were to crash this plane, they'd blame it on me for not doing my weight and balance properly here. So again, that's kind of an interesting little situation that I've created. So you're sitting there going, well, what if you want to do four copies of you inside the plane? Well, something's going to have to go, and that's going to be the weight of the fuel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drop the fuel count on Tia down a little bit here. I'll pop it to 45. Let's call it 44 gallons. There we go. And now you can see that by decreasing our range, we have increased our capability to carry four copies of me right here. So I'm just shy. As a matter of fact, I could do something like this and get away with this legally because I, and I can't get away with that legally. Uh, the reason you can get away with it a little bit is because your starting fuel is going to be uh, greater than your takeoff fuel because it takes gas to get to the runway. So a lot of times you can be 25, 651, and then you're still legal because you're going to burn off that last pound kind of a thing like that. But notice my landing weight is 2,400 pounds and notice my takeoff weight here is 25. 45. So that's a pretty substantial. And you can also see my center of gravity is almost perfectly in the middle. Now, here's where things get interesting. Let's say I want to just put my copies of me in the back seat. So I'll put zero right there, put two copies of me in the back seat. You'll notice the center of gravity of the aircraft is shifted backwards, which helps me with cruise. It makes landing very, very interesting. Uh, let's uh, go to a little extreme here, put 200. I'll put a bunch of me in the back seat, kind of a thing like here. Let's crank up the fuel. Whoops, uh, we can't go past 53 gallons in this version. And you can see now that my center of gravity is still completely within the safe zone. Uh, let's put a really, uh, let's put a middle school version of me in the front seat there. And uh, let's go ahead and um, put a hypothetical uh, football player version of me in the back seat there. And now my center of gravity is significantly towards the aft. Again, it's sort of like a paddling a canoe from the front seat kind of a problem here. So you can see that it really, really, really limits your capability as a pilot. So I'm going to go ahead and pop over flight sim again real quick. So you're sitting there saying, okay, fine. Um, let, let's see what it looks like in flight sim. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put my little uh, flight bag in the back. It's about 15 pounds. I'll put one of me here, put one of me here, one of me here, and I'll go ahead and put one of me here. Uh oh, can't do that. Let's go ahead and reduce my cargo here. And you can see that with four of me in the airplane, I'm looking at about almost half 
of my maximum fuel capacity. That's not a lot. As a matter of fact, if I were to reduce this to about 50% of my fuel capacity, which is not a lot of gas, you can see that this is what's going to happen as far as my distribution of weight goes. That's going to give me about 700 pounds of usable payload on board the aircraft. You can already see how tricky that is as far as it. Also notice in flight sim, it puts 140 pounds in the cargo, which gives us a really, really far aft kind of a thing. So you're sitting there saying, well, what really is the penalty if you know I decide to, inside the flight sim, if I want to simulate now bringing a whole family with full tanks? Well, uh, let's go take a look. Now, right, we're over in the simulate. I'm just going to confirm that my numbers didn't get changed. Nope, we're good to go. So we are a little overweight here. Um, like I said, it's just four copies of me in full tanks. There's, there's nothing extreme or anything like that, right? Ellington Airport, by the way, which is the shortest airport in Connecticut when it comes to the asphalt variety. So I'll go ahead and uh, get myself full power here. It's got a crouch. Let's go ahead and pop out the parking brake and off we go. <laughs> I feel like I just have the parking brake on. You ever get that, you know, feeling like when you're watching the end of the runway, it's progressively getting closer and closer to you. Just get that little pang of doubt. Just a little bit of a pang of doubt. Just a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit. And let's go ahead and get airborne here. Oh my God, that center of gravity is sketchy. Oh, I don't like that. So the reason I said it was sketchy is when I wanted to pull back, the plane jumped up. So I'm doing uh, 55 knots, which is below my VX here. And I'm just going to gently push the nose down just a little bit. And we're going to try to desperate. Oh my gosh, I feel like we're going to stall at any second. Oh my gosh. So we're basically um, critically, dangerously, critically dangerous right now on this aircraft. You know, fortunately, it is the 180 horsepower variety. Fortunately, it was not a hot day outside. And fortunately, the engine produces its uh, rated power. Otherwise, as you observed, we would have smacked directly into the woods over there and not been badly mangled. So you're probably saying, well, okay, so you've, you've made your point here. You've made your point. Obviously, flying beyond it is going to make things tricky. Well, we're going to have a new problem, too, by the way. Uh, since the aircraft is so heavy and it's so aft center of gravity, if I were to get myself into a stall... Whoa! Now I have that much more weight I have to cancel out. Oh, my gosh! I almost took the wings off the airplane. <laughs> Look at how close that was. So there's a reason why they put those limits in. Now, what I always find kind of interesting is to compare that to a takeoff with less than maximum in the utility category. All right, let's see what happens this time. So this is uh, just me inside the plane, so you can all see the difference. Uh, the first thing I notice is uh, we come right off the line there. There's a very, very little resistance to get this thing rolling. Get going, we're doing 40. Believe it or not, I actually have enough speed now to go ahead and tug on it and get us airborne. Look at this. I didn't even need to get up to 55. And look at how less dramatic that is. You know, I'm already at my 60 knots. I'm going to clear those obstacles at 65. And then I'm going to let the nose come down and we'll start building up a little bit of speed towards 75 here. So you can see that it's a, not only critical, it's a, one of those things that, you know, you always do as a pilot. And I find one of the more common misconceptions is that just because an airplane has uh, four seats in it means that you can just, like a car, you fill it up with a full tank of gas, you go on a long journey with your whole family. That's just not a thing in an airplane. As a matter of fact, if you know you put two heavy adults in front seat here, let's go ahead and uh, go check my little weight and balance here. If we wanted to set this to, let's say we wanted to do a full power, we'll go ahead and put two very heavy uh, adults up in the front, you can see I'm basically, oh my gosh, I'm at almost at the limits of my maximum capacity with two people. So again, it's just one of those things, and depending on your airplane, it's going to change. Another misconception too is you get an airplane that's bigger, like a Bonanza, for example, and you think that it changes. Uh, well, it doesn't actually change that much. So if we were to get our 250 pound, uh, we'll, do, we'll do 200. Uh, we'll do the classic 180s here. Take a look. If I wanted to carry four 180 pound persons, guess what? I'm outside of the center of gravity again, even though I have six seats in my aircraft. Like I said, very, very uh, big misconception here. So let's go ahead and knock this down to 50% of my max fuel and see just how many people I think I can fit in this airplane. Nope. So as a matter of fact, if you wanted to do six adults and a bonanza, let's see how little fuel we could carry here. Uh, we could carry zero. You physically can't do it. So again, very common misconception here is that you have that much capacity. I mean, this gets worse if you want to take a look at this too. As you can see, if I'll be a full tanks on a Cessna 208, and we have a bunch of uh, standard adults, again, they're no longer standard. Standard adult got heavier. We're actually out of payload capacity on a 208. Notice, 
we're a little bit safer here. And as a matter of fact, if I take my fuel line and reduce it to eh, call it 75%, I can totally safely carry this. So uh, next time you fly in a small airplane, uh, go take a look at the fuel gauge if you get a chance. I guarantee it's going to be about a little less than you're probably used to in flight sim. And again, that's just showing why it's so critically important to understand how weight and balance works and how it makes things a little bit more realistic. But other than that, enjoy.